from DFW with your host, Robbie and Tracy Mitchell. I was born Jewish. My, uh, my dad was a devout Jew and, well, don't get jealous. I mean, we were bad Jews. Um, we ate pork. Uh, but my, my mom and my dad taught me how to pray. And I'll never forget, um, I would lift up my hands to the Lord. And when I lifted up my hands, I never saw anybody do that, but the Holy Spirit was teaching me. And when I was four years old, the Lord called me into the ministry. I was there praying and Yeshua, Jesus came into my room and called me into the ministry. All growing up, I'd sit there and talk to the Lord and I'd be riding my bike singing to the Lord and, and he'd be talking to me. And growing up, just, just loving on, on Jesus. I always wanted to go to church. I, want, I wanted to learn the Word so I could preach the Word. And it wasn't until I was a freshman in high school that somebody finally invited me to church. And man, I went down to that altar call and I gave my life to the Lord. I had already, man, been living with the Lord, been, had a personal relationship with Him. But I, I just did it. I mean, I, I went all in. But they didn't invite me back to church the next Sunday. And a month went by and another month went by. And I began to think, how can I teach the Word of God when I don't know the Word of God? And so I ran from the calling. I didn't run from God. I ran from the calling. And I ran to Hollywood. I did movies. I did commercials. I did television. I did voiceovers for Disney. And I even did stand-up where I got a standing ovation from Robin Williams. It was one day when I was doing a movie, and it was a horror movie, and I thought, what am I doing? I'm sitting here doing a horror movie. It seemed so dark, and everything around me was getting darker. And the Lord came to me, and He said, I didn't call you to Hollywood. He said, I called you into the ministry. And I said to the Lord, I don't know your word. And He said, go learn it. He came to me three times, and the third time He came to me in Hollywood, I said, Lord, I don't know your word. He said, go learn it. At that time, I just married my wife, and we moved off to, uh, eventually went to Dallas and uh, went to Bible school, and I just started studying. I, I, I haven't stopped studying. I, I got my master's degree, and then I got my PhD, and I, whatever I could do, because I've always thought, all those years I wasn't in church, I had to get a hold of the Word of God. And suddenly, I found myself uh, on TBN over in uh, California, and then I was on Daystar and all the major Christian television networks. And I said to the Lord, at, at first I said, Lord, I don't want Hollywood anymore. And the Lord said, no, you're now doing this for me. And I began to see miracles in my ministry, began to, the Lord said, I'm going to put you before kings. And I literally became an uh, honorary ambassador to the United Nations for the Marshall Islands because I helped guide them through prayer. God was leading me and guiding me. And you know, when I was doing stand-up back in Hollywood, it was wonderful. It was, a, it was a, you know, you got a lot of people that would be excited and, and uh, you give them laughter for a moment. But you know, when I got into the ministry, it was completely different. I was giving them joy for a lifetime. There's something about Jesus. There's something about that good news that will change your life. I went from darkness and I went into the light. When I was going down that wrong path, it seemed right. It seemed like, you know, riches and fame and all the things that you would think were important, but they're not really that important. You know, when you're working on a, on a movie, you're sitting around. When I was doing that horror movie, there was a uh, person there that they were an advisor to the movie. And advisors to a movie, if you're, if you're doing a horror movie, well, they had warlocks and witches, real ones, that would come in and try to make that horror movie on, you know, uh, more realistic. Well, this, this guy was sitting there praying for people in the name of Satan. And he was laying his hands on people and they were falling down under the counterfeit power of Satan. And I walked up there and I thought, this, this shouldn't be. And the Holy Spirit said, who is greater, he that is within you or he that is in the world? And I walked up to him and he put his hand out. But before he could put his hand out, he literally said, he screamed and ran out of the soundstage, and he said his hand was on fire. It was during those times when I realized God had a higher plan for my life. 
And I believe God has a higher plan for your life. You've been born for such a time as this. The world has a lot that we think is important. The world has a lot that is not that important. Serving Jesus will give joy for a lifetime. Today, we are so honored to have our dear friend, Pastor Jeff Backer from Rockwall, Texas, with us today. Welcome, Pastor Jeff. It's great to be here. Man, you know, earlier we were just kind of hanging out and and talking, and uh, the conversation uniquely just turned towards faith and miracles. And I know so many today um, are desperately needing a miracle, whether it's in their body, their heart, a relationship. They're needing that point of connectivity. And so the question that I'm often asked, and I'm sure you are as well, are miracles still relevant for today? Do you still see miracles happening? Well, you know, it's the same covenant. And we have uh, the New Testament is the covenant for the church age. Yes. And so if miracles are not for today, then salvation's not for today. Oh, wow. Right? Say, wait, say that again. That's good. If miracles are not for today, yes. then salvation's not for today because it's part of the same covenant. Yeah. That covenant is the covenant for this uh, dispensation, mm-hmm. this church age. And so uh, a lot of people say, well, it ended with the 12 apostles. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I say, well, what number was Paul? <laughs> Well, it was the 12 plus Paul. And Mm -hmm. uh, well, what about, uh, you know, and you go on Stephen and yeah, I mean, on and on and on. But the the truth of the matter is God is Mm -hmm. still the same yesterday, today and forever. Mm -hmm. Good. Hallelujah. And this covenant is filled with precious promises. Mm -hmm. Everyone is yes and amen. 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 Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, I get excited when I start thinking about all the wonderful things that the Lord has done Mm -hmm. and provided in his atonement, in that blood, he provided not just to get to heaven. Yes. Matter of fact, getting to heaven is just a byproduct of being born again. Mm -hmm. We are born again. We're king's kids. We we go forth in this world, changing this world, being like Jesus in this world, and just literally going about telling the good news. Pastor, what part does faith play in miracles, have in miracles? Well, you know, it's impossible to please God without faith. And faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. As you hear the Word of God, you begin to receive that Word, whether it's salvation. That word salvation is the word soteria Mm -hmm. in the Greek. And when you look at that word soteria, it doesn't just mean getting to heaven. It means healing. It means prosperity. It it literally means the blessing, Mm -hmm. being made whole. And so... Uh, you receive everything the same way. You receive salvation by faith. You receive healing by faith. So everything that we do, we do it by faith. Mm -hmm. We do it by believing God's Word. Right, exactly. No doubt. So to the person that that has faith, and they're at home today, and is is faith in itself enough? Do we still need to get prayed for, or do we still need to have a prayer partner? Or when they have an opportunity for people to come forward at church and get prayed for, if we have faith, is that enough? Or do we really need someone to touch and agree with us in prayer? You know, I, I get that question a lot. And, and the fact of the matter is we start with our faith. We yes. build up our faith by getting in the Word of God, finding out scriptures if we need healing, yes. find healing scriptures, and get a hold of those words until we believe what mm-hmm. the Bible says. Yes. And if it's been a while and you're not quite receiving, get a hold of somebody that has the gift of miracles. Yeah. Get a hold of somebody that is out there and and moving in that gift. Uh, Because, you know, for years I didn't realize I had the gift of miracles. I just thought I prayed for people and they got healed. And I saw all kinds of people healed. There was one girl, I never forget the very first miracle I prayed for. It was a crippled girl. Her legs Mm -hmm. were twisted up. Every toe was grown into the other, crippled up. And uh, I started to pray. And as I prayed, I prayed everything. I prayed, you know, (laughs) intercession, petition, uh, supplication, irrigation. I, you know, I prayed everything I could think of. And, and and she's still crippled and she's, but she fell down under the power of the Holy Spirit. She was laying there on the floor. I got up and started to walk away. And the Lord said to me, where are you going? And I said, well, I gave you five minutes. Wow. And he said, five minutes (laughs) without faith. Wow. 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 And it changed my life. Yeah. And I walked back over and I started to pray for her. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, mold her legs like clay. And I said, what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and he said, just take her ankle. And I did. And you could hear the bones popping and snapping as that leg came out straight. Each toe, one by one by one. It changed my Mm -hmm. life. 
Literally, I've seen thousands upon yeah. thousands of miracles over the years yeah. because Jesus is still in the miracle yes. working business. Wow. Let me ask you this question. So everywhere we travel, this is ask us. In the miracles that you've seen, <laughs> if there's an unbeliever around, we know signs and wonders follow the believer, <laughs> but they're for the unbeliever. That's specific. Many church people don't even know that's in there. They follow the believer. So everywhere you and I go as believers, we ought to look over our spiritual shoulder and there's miracles following us. Amen. But they're for the unbeliever. They're not for us to sit around and just brag on our ministries and all that. But the unbeliever that sees these miracles builds curiosity. It really does. You know, I, I'm Jewish and Jewish people tend to need a miracle. They need to see a sign. Right. And, and uh, I'll never forget, I was preaching in Palm Springs years ago and it was a predominantly Jewish area. And uh, we started having miracles. A guy had his face hanging down. He had had a stroke. His whole side was hanging down. His side shot up. His face yeah. shot up. And, and literally, he was healed. And all these Jewish people started coming. Mm -hmm. wow. And we packed the place it out. It does it. It went to a four-month revival. Amen. And we, we saw these people become uh, saved where they received right. their Messiah. Amen. But, you know, you think about it. Healing took place before the cross. Right. Healing took place by the stripes upon Jesus' back right. by the whip. Mm -hmm. Healing is before the cross. Right. The cross represents health, divine health, divine life, divine health. Wholeness happened on the cross. We have wholeness. Mm -hmm. Now, praise God, if we should get you know, to a point where we need healing, we've got it. Mm -hmm. yes. But literally, we should be walking in divine, divine life. Mm -hmm. Well, well, there are all types of different um, miracles. And so earlier you alluded to creative miracles. Could you just kind of explain what the different types of miracles there are and what it's specifically a creative miracle is? Do you know, I, I think that um, we've got to begin to believe that God is bigger than whatever our problem is. Right. Uh, exceeding abundantly mm -hmm. above anything we could ask or yes. think. And there are times where there is a creative miracle yes. where a person didn't have a finger. Now they have a finger wow. or, or, you know, so many different things. I, I prayed for a lady with a goiter on her neck, two different ladies, and wow. the thing just shrunk in my hand. Mm. You know, some people say, well, I don't believe in miracles, but well, that's why you don't see them. Right? Yes, that's good. <laughs> but I tell you what, I've seen thousands upon thousands yes. of miracles over the years because I believe in miracles. Wow. And, and uh, we've seen creative miracles. There was a, a girl with a, a big, uh, you know, uh, cyst on her foot. Uh, they said she had it, had it for nine years. That thing had just disappeared. Uh, and the part of her, her, her foot came back normal. Uh, there've been so many creative miracles over the years where I've, I've literally said, man, that that's a God thing. Wow. <laughs> we yes. were talking about unbelievers a while ago. Let me ask you this question. Um, you're in a room with all these unbelievers, probably if you can think with all those you've seen, the most undeniable miracle creative that you've ever seen, that an unbeliever in your service saw it, there was no way to deny it. What would you say that would be? Well, you know, the crippled leg was, was pretty awesome. They saw it with their eyes. They saw it with their eyes. Um, but there, there's been so many. I mean, in, in 37 years of ministry, I, I, and I started when I was three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, I've literally seen tens of thousands of miracles mm -hmm. in the ministry because everywhere we go, for 25 years I traveled. Uh, now we're pastoring uh -huh. Great Faith Church in Rockwell, Texas. But uh, for 25 years we traveled and um, everywhere we went we prayed for the sick. Right. And so when you pray for the sick, I mean there's just so many miracles Everywhere you go, they're sick. Wonderful <laughs> thing was this one uh, girl up in uh, Indiana, she came to a service and uh, for six weeks, she had, uh, before six weeks, she was, came down with this thing called, um, it was uh, sarcosis, sar I don't know. The devil comes up with weird names. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember them all. But, yeah, but she literally, her, her body was, was fighting itself and mm -hmm. she would shake. Yeah. Wow continuously, 24 hours a day, shake, had no energy, had to use a walker, mm. and she was in her 30s. Had to use a walker, shaking continuously every single day, came to the service, came forward in that service, and this is on YouTube. You can see it on YouTube. Yeah. 
But the uh, just laid hands, I just said, yeah. be whole. And as soon as I said the word whole, oh. she stopped shaking. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got all of her strength back. Wow. And everyone saw it. Amen. So here's the debate that I have debated time and time again since mm-hmm. I've been spirit filled. And it's came up a lot. Mm-hmm. And it raises blood pressure and tension in spirit filled people. Okay. Are we the generation? You've already covered that. It did not go out with the apostles, all that we've, we've, we've dealt with. Are we the generation that's going to see great miracles? You know, when uh, Jesus went to the marriage at Cana, mm-hmm. he had six vessels there of water. Now, Jewish people, we, you'd go into a feast and you'd wash your hands and your feet with that water. Mm-hmm. It was for cleansing. Right. And so uh, six represents man, six vessels. Right. Man is a vessel. Man is a vessel to honor or dishonor. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus changes that water into wine. Mm -hmm. And the wine represents the blood. And the blood is our cleansing. And so literally, uh, the head of that feast comes and says, you've saved the best for last. I believe God, representing six mean man, God has saved the best for last. We are the generation that will usher in the second coming. The whole earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. That we will go forth and reap the last harvest, lay hands on the sick, bring them in, and and I believe the best is about to happen. Me too. Hey, (laughs) Brother Jeff, Pastor Jeff, would you look right here, and I want you to pray for that one today who is sick in their body, maybe needs deliverance in their mind, maybe they're in a bed of oppression or or vexation or whatever that thing is in their life that today they need that, that doubling, that coming together, that impartation of prayer to see the miracle that they need in their life today. Let's agree. Come on, let's agree together. No matter what you're going through today, Jesus is bigger than your problem. Heavenly Father, I thank thank you you that the anointing is going forth, that there's no distance in prayer, that the glory of God is going right to where they are, and that anointing is is right there on the top of their head going down to the soles of their feet. Mm. Be made whole Mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. As always, we want to stay connected with you. We love uh, to partner with you. We love to pray with you. Be sure to go on our website, bottom right hand corner of the screen. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Appreciate you.